Hi, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a, um, a, a flow whereby you have a series of timers that are for, uh, for different um, states of uh, uh, something. For example, uh, if you've got uh, multiple priorities, maybe you wanna have the um, SLA time uh, swap out uh, it, when that priority changes without completely restarting. Uh, for example, if you've got a, uh, somebody submits a two hour, you know, a high priority ticket, um, and then the, the agent sees that, you know what, actually this is a normal priority ticket, and they move it to a normal uh, priority, but you know, when they do that, an hour and a half has already taken place. Um, it doesn't, uh, you know, start the eight hours from the beginning, it takes those hour, uh, hour and a half into consideration and, and you've, you've got six and a half hours left as opposed to restarting that timer. So the way that that works is you set a unique identifier in the trigger that starts all of these uh, kind of uh, timers. Uh, but let's start by having a look at each one of these timers uh, to what, see what goes into it. So first things first, give them all a similar name. Uh, the duration here is the time at which it takes uh, or you, you set in which you want the desired behavior to take place. In this case, it's when the first response takes place. Um, and then down here, uh, you've got the magic of the timer in where you set certain things to happen when a timer is either started, uh, when it is stopped, i.e. when the desired uh, behavior takes place, or when it is ended, when, uh, for example, which would be a bad thing, when, when the 24 hours and uh, 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 24 hour completes, uh, that would be a bad thing. So uh, maybe we would want to say, you know, add a private comment to say, oh no, uh, SLA breached or something like that. You could uh, pop in a notification, you could add a tag to the ticket to do something else, maybe uh, send off a Slack message, it's up to you. But we don't wanna get bogged down in the, the functionality, uh, this type of functionality of the, the timer, we're concentrating here in this video on how to swap out your timers. So once you've set up all of your timers, uh, then uh, in, you, you, to, you've got uh, your start uh, triggers here. You can create triggers to start them, the timers and create triggers to stop them. So you will need to click on create trigger next to the um, uh, timers uh, as I've already done with these three, we've still got one to go. Uh, if we click on edit trigger here for the um, priority low, we'll be able to see that, um, uh, uh, you know what goes into starting it uh, so it's like it's looking for priority is changed to low therefore uh, in the action uh, call the webhook uh, first response uh, uh, low priority which is gonna um, kind of uh, uh, let our service know that this this timer has to has to run and this is where the unique identifier is so we have got the identifier here and uh, or you know the, the name identifier here and the actual identifier. Uh, so th this will stay regardless of w w what process you're creating. This will always stay the same. It has to be identifier here. But this is the uh, term, I guess you call it, uh, that c will differ depending on the process that you're setting up. In this case, it's about first response times. So we've just put in the the word first response. So let's come back here and see, we can see that we haven't created a, a trigger for first response SLA urgent. So we'll do that now. Um, by clicking that, it creates a trigger for us. This trigger will never fire in that it is checking for uh, kind of test conditions that'll never take place unless you intentionally set them. So we'll strip out those rules. For example, it's looking for tags contains test uh, time and start. Let's get rid of that. And it's removing that tag, so we'll get rid of that as well. Uh, as you can see, the trigger is already firing uh, the webhook, which will uh, cause the, this timer to start. Now we just have to set the conditions as to when we want the, uh, the, the, um, the timer to actually start, which is when the priority uh, is changed to urgent. Um, and so we've got the right condition here. Now we just need to put in the, the identifier that's going to match this over here. So the way that we do that um, is I'm going to copy this and we'll click add parameter over here, add parameter identifier, and then we'll set the value to be the exact same like so. And then we click on save. Cool. All right. So once you've done that with all the triggers that start all of the different timers, uh, you can test it out. 
So um, note that I've, uh, you can see down here, I've got priority low, normal high and urgent. I do also have one up here for when the priority is not set, um, which is uh, always a possibility uh, when somebody submits a ticket, maybe you get it via email. So you do need to take consideration of all the different states of the field that you're looking to swap out the timer for. Um, but uh, yeah, let's just try this out and you'll see how it works. So I'm gonna create a new t uh, ticket here. Um, uh, let's just create any old ticket here. I'm just going to create test, uh, test, and submit. Um, and then when this uh, kind of uh, ticket is created, we'll be able to see that a trigger has fired. The priority has not been set. So we can see here the first response SLA priority is not set 36 hours. Um, now what we can do is we can change the priority to say, for example, normal. Um, and in doing that, um, the, a trigger will fire. So we'll be able to see in the events log here, the trigger at timers start first response normal has fired. And we can see over here that in the uh, um, uh, log of what's happened, we can see that the time has been edited from 36 hours to eight hours. Um, and we can see that it's now uh, going to uh, complete in eight hours. Now we've also got that rule inside the uh, timer to let us know how many minutes we've got remaining. Um, uh, like so, uh, this is ob obviously an optional kind of thing that you can, can do there that I've just done to, to highlight uh, you know what happens when you change. Uh, let's do that again for the urgent timer, which we set up the trigger for uh, just before. So I'm gonna change it to urgent here and we'll submit that again. And then we'll be able to see another trigger fire to apply the, the urgent timer. And we'll be able to see that the urgent timer has now been applied, priority equals urgent. And we can see that our time remaining is uh, 28 minutes. Um, uh, note that it is 28 minutes and not 30 minutes because it is swapping out the timer, not simply starting uh, the timer from scratch. So yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea as to how to set up uh, uh, interchangeable uh, timers uh, to be able to kind of uh, uh, create flows like this. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, be sure to email support at sweethawk.com. Uh, thanks for watching.